or any modern Mercedes that are future classics. This is a hotly contested question that I like answering. You know, I was talking to one of my subscribers about this over the weekend, and we were wondering, you know, which of the modern Mercedes are going to appreciate and become collectible, or at least going to retain a good chunk of their value. And so you might be surprised at my answer to this because there is going to be a, um, there's going to be a, uh, a, a curveball in here. So, in 1995, and I've always said this, Mercedes switched from engineering-based company decisions, approximately 95, to financially-based company decisions. Prior to 1995, the model was engineer the car, build it the right way, and sell it for what it costs to design, develop, and build. Do not lose money on the car. Mercedes already knew that market demand for their cars is very strong. They were king of the mountain. They did not have competition from Lexus or Infiniti. Um, they were viewed as superior to Jaguar and to an extent BMW, at least if you wanted a car that lasted for a long time. So Mercedes knew that they could build their cars not to a cost but to a standard and the market would absorb the cost because they wanted a car built to a standard. Now. With all these things that have become an issue in today's world, such as instant gratification, people no longer really appreciating stuff, you know, a car just being an appliance now, Mercedes has done a successful job of adapting. But in order to adapt to this, you have to eschew build quality and long-term longevity for planned obsolescence, fast profits, and a, um, I would say, a more cost-centric approach to building a car. Now, cost-centric cars have been with us for a long time. Look at American cars from the 1950s and 60s. They were definitely obsessed with the cost of building the car. Look at Japanese cars. They were built to a cost, not a standard, and have always been. That doesn't necessarily mean they're bad cars. It just means that they're not necessarily very interesting. Um, you look at Korean cars and they're definitely built to a price or a cost. They are not built to a standard at all. This is why if you have a Hyundai Genesis, your touch screen, which is a feature most car companies think that every owner wants, despite the fact I don't think anybody likes those things, uh, will fail after about five years of being in use because the electrolytic capacitors in it and the circuit board were, were built to a low price just so they can make the thing work and get it through a warranty period. And so for this reason, we look at how why Mercedes doesn't really build classics anymore. Now, the emphasis on today's cars is about performance and safety, even though those are not necessarily things that older Mercedes lack. New cars do perform better. They are faster. They're stupid fast. In fact, they're uselessly fast. I can't think of any reason why I would need a car with a top speed of 170 miles an hour when it's already been proven that when people start driving over 80 miles an hour on any road, the accidents are more severe and fatalities go up. In other words, human beings are not great at driving cars faster than 80 miles an hour even when they have a bunch of driver aids they don't use them that's why you see people in seventy thousand dollar audi q7s texting on their phone while driving even though the car is fully automated and can take your text message that you speak to the bluetooth system and turn it into a message on your phone because why well the engineers that built the car are a lot smarter than the people who are using it and so um, this sort of thing is not going away anytime soon. So as a result, most modern Mercedes are only engineered to perform as well because they don't want to get crapped on by the automotive press and they want to appear like they're in line with the rest of their peers. And, um, you know, this is more, you know, BS that the automotive industry does just to maintain an image rather than an actual build standard. So. For this reason, the only Mercedes that are really going to go on to be collectible cars are uh, in the three cat following categories. One, specialty built AMG cars such as the Black Series. 
there will always be somebody who lusts after a black series car. Always. Number two, cars that may have had some sort of connection to a celebrity or a royal family or were built for a special purpose. So let's say uh, an armored car or a special high performance AMG car built for somebody like the Sultan of Brunei or something like that. Um, in this category, we may also find cars from Brabus, uh, AMG, like the AMG, um, uh, like the special AMG cars that are still built to order. If you go and go in and ask them for it, because they still do have a built to order division, it's just very expensive. And then the number th number three, vehicles that are outstandingly practical. Yes, outstandingly practical. What do I mean by this? I mean diesel G wagons, uh, cars like the 05 and 06 E320 CDI, which is a great great car that's let down by a computer and a so-so body and, and chassis that's got planned obsolescence built into it. People prize the cars because of their efficiency. It's sort of like how Honda Insights are more numerous now than, um, than like it's easier to find a nice 97 Insight than a nice 97 Civic. Maybe, I don't know if that's a faulty comparison, but Anyway, those three cars will probably do well, but middle of the road Mercedes, you know, we're never going to see a, another 126 S class. We're never going to see another 107 SL. These cars have been let down by high maintenance and repair costs and planned obsolescence built in to the electronic details. You will see these things parked as time goes on because of electronic problems, not because their body fit and finish is bad um, or for major repairs such as blown up engines from faulty balance shafts or something like that. But, you know, people have a hard time letting go of stuff, so they'll continue to think their cars are valuable. But eventually, you know, time catches up with us and we have to say, okay, maybe it's time to buy our next new car. That is, if you're stuck in the cycle of buying new Mercedes. I'm always amazed at the people that call themselves longtime Mercedes owners but have never owned a pre-1995 Mercedes. If you have not owned a pre-1995 Mercedes, you really don't have a clue about how good Mercedes are. I'm just letting you know. Um, okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If I upset you too bad, um, we will send you a tissue with the Pierre Hidari's logo on it so you can dry your tears. Uh, and in the meantime, like, share, subscribe, tap the bell for notifications, leave your comment below. Remember that classic Mercedes were built prior to the 90s and modern Mercedes are just that, unless you have something really special, you are driving a car, don't get fanatical about it, enjoy the safety and performance, and see you later.